Hi everyone, I wanted to go over a question that a student had asked about a problem that showed up on their quiz three, which involves a cooling curve. So the question states, how much energy must be removed from a 22.2 gram sample of benzene, which has the molecular formula C6H6, at 85 degrees Celsius to solidify the sample and lower the temperature to negative 7.5 degrees Celsius. And the following physical data may be useful. Um, so what you want to imagine is that in order to go from 85 degrees Celsius, where gas, is, where benzene's a gas, to negative 7.5 degrees Celsius, where benzene's a solid, quite a bit of heat energy needs to be removed. And so that's our goal in this calculation. <clears throat> And so I've written down the given data, and anytime I do a heating or cooling curve problem, I like to draw it out. And so it's important when you're doing a heating or cooling curve to mark the melting points and the boiling points. And so the boiling point is 80 degrees Celsius, and the melting point is 6 degrees Celsius. Then it's also important to mark the starting and the final temperatures. So the initial temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. And so that's how I knew that benzene was a gas because we're above the boiling point. And then the final temperature is negative 7.5 degrees Celsius. And so that's how I knew benzene at that temperature is a solid because it's below the melting or freezing point. Okay. And so once to draw out when we go from 85 to 80 degrees Celsius, we're gonna to have to change temperature. We're in the gas phase at that point. But once we reach the boiling point, then we will condense from a gas to a liquid. And remember, temperature doesn't change when a phase change is occurring. And so that's why there's no slope in that line. And then benzene, we're gonna to have to cool it down and remove more heat energy to go from 80 degrees Celsius to 6 degrees Celsius. And during this point in time, benzene's a liquid. And then at 6 degrees Celsius, we reach the melting temperature or the freezing temperature here. And that's when benzene turns from a liquid to a solid. So once again, a phase change. Temperature is not changing here um, during this phase change. And so that's the reason why there's no slope in this line. And then finally, we're gonna cool it even further, remove more heat energy to get to the final temperature of negative 7.5 degrees Celsius. And so let's just mark our cooling curve. At this point, we are working with a gas between 85 and 80 degrees Celsius. At 80 degrees Celsius, we go from a gas to a liquid, that's called condensation, which is the opposite of evaporation or vaporization. And then between 80 to 60 degrees Celsius, we're in the liquid phase. At six degrees Celsius, we reach the freezing point or melting point here, and that's when we are going from a liquid to a solid. And then finally, we are going to negative 7.5 degrees Celsius, and so benzene's a solid at that point. And so we're gonna have to do calculations for every step of the way. And so we will need to do a calculation for step one, and then to do the phase change at step two, and then to cool it down in the liquid phase, step three, to do the phase change from a liquid to a solid, step four, and to do the, to cool that solid to negative 7.5 degrees Celsius, step five. So we'll have to do a total of five different calculations and then add up what we find. Now, when you're doing these types of problems, there are two different formulas you can use. If you're taking my class, when we do phase changes, we use the moles times the enthalpy, either of fusion or vaporization, depending on which point of the cooling or heating curve we're working with. Um, the reason why I say if you're taking my class is that in our textbook, in second edition Tro, um, Adam's first um, chemistry book, we are using moles times the enthalpy, and that's because the constants that are provided to us are in kilojoules per mole, and so it's moles times the enthalpy. However, if you're using another textbook or if you're looking at um, other 
online resources, you may see this as mass times delta H, and that's only because their enthalpy, their delta H's, are in kilojoules per gram. So just be really mindful of your units if you're working problems outside of my class. Um, but for my class, I will provide you the units we're used to working with, which is in kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy of vaporization or fusion. And so that's the reason why the formula for phase change is moles times delta H. The other one we will be working with when we're changing temperature is Q is equal to MCAT. And so that's where we do see mass. C is the specific heat capacity at different states of matter, different phases. And then the change in temperature. And remember, change in temperature is always equal to TF minus T initial. Um, and just make sure that you're consistent with that and that way the sign won't confuse you um, in the end. So it'll always work out if you follow that appropriately. And then finally, I just want to re reiterate how important it is to draw your heating or cooling curve um, because then that way you don't accidentally miss any steps. If you have five steps, maybe the temperature started um, at 75 degrees Celsius. So in that case, you'd only have three steps, but you can only do that or know that information if you draw out this curve. Once again, always put in the boiling point and the freezing point or melting point, and then the initial and final temperature so you know where you're at in terms of how many steps you will have to calculate. All right, I just wanted to spend some time going through the setup so you feel comfortable with what to look out for for heating and cooling curves. Now let's go ahead and do some calculations. And so Q1 is equal to, now we're changing temperature. So do we do Q is equal to N delta H or Q is equal to MCAT? Okay, you wanna do Q is equal to MCAT, MC delta T. And so mass is 22.2 grams. Always ask yourself, what phase am I in or state of matter? We're in a gas, so we're gonna use 1.06, um, the joules per grams degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature um, will be final, 80 minus initial, 85. And I didn't write in the units just to save on space, but be mindful that the specific heat capacities are in joules and delta H is in kilojoules. So just be very, very mindful of what your units are. So when I do this calculation, um, in my calculator, I would get a negative 117.66 and this is in joules when I do Q is equal to MCAT. Now I'm gonna go ahead and convert to kilojoules by dividing by 1000 uh, because the final answer needs to be in kilojoules. And so this would be a negative 0.11766 kilojoules, just keeping lots of digits to prevent any rounding error in the end. All right, when, um, one suggestion is to highlight that answer um, so that if you need to find it later or you will need to find it later to find the total heat energy, it's easy to find. All right, Q2, so at the second step, we're doing a phase change, so which formula would you use? Okay, Q is equal to N, oh, I already wrote Q, <laughs> is N delta H. Now, which delta H will you use? Will you use vaporization or fusion? Vaporization, now this is something that if you're taking my class, I've told you that enthalpy vaporization is always given as a positive value, but you have to decide, depending on what type of uh, phase change you're doing, will it be a positive or negative value? Now, we're going from a gas to a liquid, and so what kind of phase change is that? Condensation. When we do condensation, are we adding heat energy or are we removing heat energy? Yeah, we're doing a cooling curve, so removing heat energy. So is the sign positive or negative? should be negative, good. Right, we have to remove heat energy in order to condense, right? You can think of it as those molecules need to slow down, right? And if we have a lot of heat energy, they're gonna keep moving and dancing more. Um, and so by removing heat energy, they slow down and then they can, can go towards a more condensed state of matter, like a liquid, right? Gas versus liquid. All right, we'll need moles. And so on the side here, um, I'll just do the calculation. There's 22.2 grams, the molar mass of benzene, 78.12 grams per mole. And so the moles that we're working with here is 0 0.28417. Um, 
moles. So anytime we're working with moles, we'll plug that number into our calculator, 28417, and then times a negative enthalpy vaporization, 33.9. Make note that, that uh, the enthalpy vaporization is in kilojoules, so when we plug this into our calculator, we'll get a negative 9.63 kilojoules in order to do that condensation. All right, moving on to step three. Q3, which formula would you use? You're in the liquid phase, you're just changing temperature. So good, MCAP, changing temperature. The mass is still 22.2 grams. The specific heat capacity for a liquid is 1.73, and that's in joules per gram degree Celsius. And then TF is six degrees Celsius, T initial is 80. So that's also something to, to be mindful of, is that when we talk about TF, we're looking in T initial, we're looking at that step only. We're not looking at T initial to begin with or T final to end with. We just look at one step at a time to identify what our final temperature, initial temperature are for that step only. It's important to remember that. That's why, once again, it's important to draw this out so you can identify where's the, stre where's the step, where's the beginning and the end of each step. Okay. If it helps, if you're a visual person like me, you can like even kind of put dots here so you can see beginning and end of each step um, to really identify initial and final points. <clears throat> All right, so when I plug this into my calculator for Q3, I got negative 2,842.044 joules. I divide by 1,000 to get this answer in kilojoules so I'm consistent with my units. All right, Q4. Which formula are you going to use for Q4? Going from a liquid to a solid, we're doing a phase change. So Q is equal to the moles times delta H of what? Fusion. Now, fusion is just another word for melting. Um, we're not melting here. We're actually doing what? So the opposite of melting or fusion is freezing. So is the sign for delta H fusion positive or negative in this scenario? Excellent. It's negative. Anytime you're freezing, you're going to remove even more heat energy to get those molecules to slow down and condense. <clears throat> Excellent. So... The moles are 0 0.28417 times negative, and then the freezing um, enthalpy of fusion, negative 9.8 kilojoules per mole, so this answer will be already provided in kilojoules. And I got negative 2.7849 kilojoules. I'll highlight that. And then one more step, Q5. We're changing temperature here, so Q is equal to MCAT, MC delta T, 22.2 grams times the specific heat capacity of a solid, 1.51, it's in joules. Change in temperature, negative 7.5 minus 6, so TF minus T initial, and I got that answer to be negative 452. 0.547 joules divided by 1,000, negative 0.452547 kilojoules. Awesome. So our whole goal here was to calculate the total amount of heat energy to go from this starting point to the final place here. So 85 degrees Celsius to negative 7.5. Like how much heat energy will we have to remove? So Q total or Q tot is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 plus Q5. And when I added that all up, I got negative 15 Point eight kilojoules as the final answer. Now, if you're taking my course and if we're doing um, multiple choice type questions, 
um, the answer choices will either be for this cooling curve all negative or they may be positive but think about the wording of the question so originally this question was how much energy must be removed and so that vocabulary the way that question's phrased is that we already know the heat energy is going to be removed and so the answer choices for this specific question were positive values and the answer was 15.8 kilojoules and the reason why there was no negative is because we're already implying that that heat energy will be removed and we kind of indicated that on the graph here um, so that negative sign just means that heat energy is removed so if it's not present in your answer choices if you're taking my class and you're doing multiple choice try to think about okay why isn't it present is it because of the way the question is stated we're already with an understanding that heat has to be removed to go from a higher temperature to a lower temperature and to go through all those different uh, states of matter and so just be mindful of that now the only thing that I see students make um, common mistakes on and you know myself included when I was a student is if you start, you know, you obviously Q is equals um, to MCAT will give you a negative value um, if you're doing a cooling curve because the temperature final minus initial will always be negative, right? So this will be negative. But what students often um, mistake is that these literature constants, enthalpy of vaporization and fusion are not provided as negative values, and so they'll forget to put a negative. And so this number, you know, if they made that mistake, would be positive for them. And so when they add everything up, and also this number would end up being positive, they wouldn't get the correct value for the total amount of heat energy. So be mindful if you're doing a cooling curve that every value should be negative so that when you add them up, you get the total sum correct. But if your answer choice is not negative, don't fret. Um, that just means that maybe the question was worded in such a way that's like, we know the heat energy is removed. How much is it? Right? What's the total quantity that is removed? All right. I hope this video was helpful for you all. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Have a good day.